how does one take a picture of a black hole? Black holes are giant concentration of matter in the universe, which attract matter and light. But on the scale of the universe, they're also very small. You know, the, the largest black hole in the universe that we can look at are the size of a mustard seed in New York, as seen from Europe. And so if you want to see something that small, you need a giant telescope, a telescope the size of the world. And of course, nobody wants a telescope, you know, the size of the world above them. So we need to use a trick. And the trick is to build a virtual network of telescopes around the world where each telescope has a slightly different perspective of the same object. And from that slight difference in perspective, we can actually recreate a real image of a very tiny, small source in the universe. All of this sounds slightly frightful because we know that black holes swallow everything that's around them, including light, for example. Should we on Earth be fearful that uh, a black hole might swallow us at some point in time? Well, if you jump into it, I think it would not be a good idea. <laughs> um, but luckily, all these black holes are so far away that we can actually look at them from a safe distance. And uh, it's completely unlikely that we're ever going to be hit by a black hole. We may be hit by an asteroid. That's a much bigger threat to, to life on Earth. But a black hole? No, that's not going to happen. Okay, so a black hole is just something very fascinating, but very far away. But theoretically, if you were to jump into a black hole, what would happen to you? Is there any way of knowing? We can calculate what would happen if you jump into a black hole. If you, uh, you would fall towards it and you would see it in front of you, you wouldn't even notice that you're inside a black hole if, if it's really large. Um, but your friends back on Earth would see you fade away. And if you want to shout back to them, you want to send, you know, a radio signal or laser light to them, that light would return to you. It would fall with you into the black hole. At some point, you would not be able to say anything about what you see inside. You know, it's like death. You know, you, you may be in a different world, but you can't, you can't talk about what you see. And uh, eventually, it would be crushed to a point. You would be, you know, compressed into one little point. And, you know, there are some black holes which are smaller, and if you fall into them, then you'd be stretched into a spaghetti before you even reach that point. So, you know, by and large, you know, falling into a black hole is only a very short pleasure, I, I, I would say. If you, however, manage to hang on you know, with a fantastic super rocket just above the black hole, then actually you would slow down your time, and you would see the rest of the universe in fast forward. And then if you'd be able to return before you fall into a black hole, you know, don't jump into it, just, you know, stop in front of it and then go back, you would see the Earth, you know, uh, hundreds of years, thousand years further ahead because you had lived in a different time than the rest of the universe. And that's the magic of, uh, of black holes. Maybe we should get back to our time. If we're talking about uh, Namibia, because you are coming to Namibia on the 24th of February, Is Namibia really home to the best night sky in the world? I think so. Um, there are a few places where you have a wonderful night sky. One is Chile, where you have a lot of professional telescopes. But Namibia is as good, maybe maybe even better in some aspects because there, you know, it's a low population area. Uh, it's very dark here. If you if you go into you know out on the countryside, um, it's a very clear air and. Most importantly, you are in a location where the center of the Milky Way is right above you. That's the heart of our galaxy. That's where most of the stars are. So the most spectacular night sky is just above you. And it's it's just like painted. So I, I was flabbergasted the first time I saw it. And I thought, wow, this is this is not real. So I think that's something that you should... And I was talking with people in Namibia. I said, you have the most beautiful night sky. And I said, oh, really, do we? That's something, folks, you need to appreciate. You know, this is a natural marvel and wonder that you have and uh, something like this you would never see in the netherlands or in germany even in some of the best sites um yeah so if i understand you correctly this is a potential that namibia should maybe uh, further explore uh, absolutely i think so i mean this is something that's you know in, in marketing towards tourists i mean and, and show them you know explain to them what what's up there and of course it's it makes you an interesting partner for fundamental science as well it's something where Namibia has an unfair advantage compared to other countries. 
Um, uh, you could, you know, some international telescopes uh, could come here. So I think that's something to develop and it would attract uh, attention. It would attract scientists, uh, technology. So, yeah, uh, I mean, make use of that unfair advantage. Now, with you coming to Namibia on the 24th of February, um, is your aim with your presentation to maybe also enlighten more people about this untapped potential? I, I want to inspire. When I give talks, I try to inspire people and to look up into, into, into the heavens, into the sky, uh, and discover the universe around us. That's, I think, one of my main missions. And I want to share our story, of course, uh, with, with the people there. Uh, and and of course we have this partnership with with, with UNAM where we develop this this telescope, and so it's good to know each other and talk with each other, and so that's an opportunity to you know tell our story, uh, our background, but also hear you know the the ideas and the visions of 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 people in the country, and that that's for me very important, and that's why I've been doing this and been coming to Namibia for many years, even before we started that you know. You know, that's the very first thing we did with this project was just go there and talk with people. Mm -hmm. Now, recently, um, quite a few Nobel Prizes have been awarded to scientists in the field of uh, astronomy, for example. Is this now somewhat of an in-field, an in-research field within the science community? Absolutely. This is a golden era of astronomy, astrophysics. This is a lot of physics is happening now in astronomy. Many of the brightest minds are dealing with, with problems in, in astronomy and astrophysics. We have a, an armada of new telescopes and, and technologies that, that give us images and insights into the universe that nev no generation ever had before. And, 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 and this really is the time to do astrophysics. Uh, that's where things are happening. And this is where also big projects happening, where, where big, a lot of technology is developed. Yeah, this is, you know, where young students, you know, are inspired by where they want to be. Uh, that That's one of the areas. If you're interested in, if you're, if you're curious, you want to know about the universe, you're, you're curiosity driven, that's your place to be. And I mean, you, since April 2019, are world famous. Uh, most people should know your name because you presented with your team, of course, the very first picture of a black hole ever. The question now is, does that make you a superstar? No, it makes me a lucky guy. Um, I mean, you have a dream. 20 years ago, I had this idea we, we, we should be able to make an image of a black hole. I was at the right time, at the right moment, and I guess I had the right idea. But then it takes a team to make it work. So in the end, the team is a superstar. And, uh, you know, in, in 100 years, you know, I probably will be forgotten, but I think black holes will stay and the results we, we, we've created will, will, will still be around. And that gives you a lot of, I think, satisfaction to, you know, to have been part of something that yeah, has been a little bit historic in science indeed. Mr. Falke, thanks a lot for your time.